Good morning, my darlings, and welcome to a brand new vlog. Today we've got some really wonderful things on the agenda. We're starting off today with a little Cotswold road trip from our little nook, which is the very top right of the Cotswolds. We're going to kind of the heart of the Cotswolds on, yeah, a little road trip. So we're gonna stop in a few cute little villages en route, and the destination is a farm shop. <laughs> yes, Charlie and I are a little bit obsessed with um, farm shops. I just find them the most wholesome, lovely places. It's really lovely to support, obviously, local farmers, something that we've been talking about a lot on our various channels lately. And I think you can actually just find the nicest things there, really sweet things that are a little bit more unique than you find in supermarkets. The produce is always so lovely. So yeah, we're gonna take you um, to one that we've not been to before, but I've heard a lot of people talking about, so it's been on our radar for a little while. And then tonight, there is a kind of tomato feast. <laughs> That sounds really weird, but that's literally what it is at the Bull in Chalbury. So the Bull is um, a fairly newly launched pub and they, again, like to support local growers, local farmers and um, local produce. And at the moment we are coming to the end of tomato season. There's only so long that you can store tomatoes. So I think they're having like a big celebration, cooking loads of dishes with the magical vegetable and that's happening tonight. So lots of really nice kind of local Cotswoldy things. So it's gonna be a really lovely wholesome vlog. I feel like I have totally dressed <laughs> the part for today. I've got on my gorgeous, now I call this my Sherpa gilet, I'm not sure if that's right, Sheerling gilet, with this gorgeous little tan piping. I think it's so beautiful, it's such a lovely, cosy, layering piece for this time of year. And then this really wonderful shirt, it's actually from Beaufort and Blake, as is the gilet. You'll see why <laughs> very, very shortly there is gonna be a little tie-in. And it's just got really cute, I thought these were hedgehogs initially, but actually they're acorns. Just the perfect autumnal outfit. And then I've gone full Cotswold kind of country attire with a pair of jeans, also Beaufort and Blake, little tan leather belt, and then I've got on my boots. <laughs> that was quite the gymnast move. Now we are very lucky, timing wise, that we have got Kat with us today, so we should be able to film extra beautifully some of the gorgeous things that we're going to be doing today. Kat has just arrived, Charlie has made us all smoothies for the road, so without further ado, let's go and check out Jolly Nice Farm Shop. the jolly nice farm shop. I feel like farm shop is an understatement. There is so much stuff going yeah. on here. There's a drive through over there. I think it's nice burgers and shakes and stuff. It smells amazing. It, it does smell amazing. But we've just spotted this sign and we know we've come to the right place. Puppy meet up every Saturday here. But unfortunately our boys are too old. Do you know what though, Dickens, you can, Dickens can pass for a six to 18 month. It does say And also it dogs. says plus nervous small dogs, which is literally Dickens. Under 18 meters? Um, yeah. Months. So uh, we're going to be back for the puppy meetup. But yeah, so where are we? So we're near Stroud. We're near sort of Painswick. I think if you look on a map of the Cotswolds, mm -hmm. we're so we're about an hour from where we live, which is really nice to explore a different area. If you look on, my phone is playing music right now. There you go, a bit of opium. <laughs> I thought it was thought, coming through a speaker I or something. Piped music. Yeah, well, actually, that was quite nice. Yeah. Um, I so like, we're the first farm yeah. So we're been sort of where music. we live is very North Cotswolds. We're now south of Cheltenham. Oh. So we're not far from Stroud, Painswick, Minchin, Hampton. We're also near Tetbury, which is where we've been for antiquing. Mm -hmm. um, and near Sirencester. You have to say that with an accent. Sirencester. Sirencester. And South Cerny. And actually, that is very much um, bringing back memories of this country, isn't it? If you ever watch this country, I've got enemies in North Cerny. I've got enemies in South Cerny. I've got enemies in Cerny Wick. <laughs> I've got enemies in Borton on the Water. That's a direct quote as well. Um, okay, I feel like we need to talk through our outfits because inadvertently Charlie and I are wearing matching his and hers Beaufort and Blake outfits. Do you want to this. talk through your look? So, um, this is Beaufort and Blake. What would you call this? Would you call this like a, a bootle? No. No, like a sharp um, shearling. Like a shearling gilet. Mm -hmm. Obviously everyone knows that I love a gilet. One of the things I'm most excited about, if I was like top five things I'm excited about autumn, winter, is being able to wear gilets again. 
uh, Sunday roast, gilets, uh, lighting the fire, coming and exploring on beautiful days like this. But yeah, so this is super versatile. I think a gilet is the perfect transitional piece because you can wear this with a t-shirt and it makes it sort of a little bit cosier. Today I've got it with a shirt. Nice. Rolled up. Yep. I don't wear a lot of shirts, but it is a very comfy shirt. Mm -hmm. It's the sort of shirt that I would probably wear for Sunday roast. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm wearing exactly the same. <laughs> Literally the same. Mine's got Yours little... is a different material though, isn't it? It's got yeah. acorns on Yours it. Yours is even softer. Yeah, it's really yeah. soft. Um, both in Blake trousers. Anyway, without further ado, let's go and check out what's going on over here. We haven't seen any puppies yet, um, but hopefully we'll have a little look in the farm But it's shop. not Saturday or Sunday, is it? So. No, but there still might be some. Yeah. Anyway, let's go and check it out. Things just got serious. Things just got serious. That's this Sunday, and look, one of the entries is best sausage dog. That just shows, you know. And you know what? That's free. sort of like the main event as well, because one thirty after lunch, it's sort of Prime like the time. headline act. So Dexter <laughs> would probably win that one. Dicky would probably win Waggiest Tail. Um, no, Dexter uh, Dickens would win best veteran because he looks like an old boy. Dexter might win best pedigree as well. To be honest, I think Dexter would win all of these. <laughs> So Dickens would bring breast cross. Oh wow, they win both and Blake vouchers. Lunch for two at the Kennel Club. That's awesome. Is that dog food or human food? <laughs> This is what I love about places like this that are supporting local businesses. So, for example, they've got Farmers' Night, help us build regular gatherings for those of us working in the agricultural community, calling local farmers, young farmers, old farmers, students, bring your friends. That's Amazing. lovely. They've got a puppy meetup, they've got a classic car meetup, so many lovely events. These are gorgeous for just putting all around the house to bring a bit of the outside in and for table decorating. Look at all these lovely old pots. It's nicely done, isn't it, with all yeah. the stacking of the pots? Oh, I wonder if they're making some wreaths. So lovely. Yeah, these are great for if you want to do a DIY wreath, because then you can just add dried flowers, leaves, hydrangeas, add them onto there. So this is called Timeless Red Carpet, which is from the Harry Potter company. We buy a lot of these herbs from Dalesford. But what is nice, I've not seen this at Dalesford, is it's got like a reddish pink flower. Mm. Um, Whereas thyme often has white flowers, it can have blue flowers. So that's really nice as a different addition to our herb bed, I reckon, darling. Lovely. And this, Woodruff, is interestingly what someone told me recently, is a really good alternative in cooking to adding vanilla. Because obviously vanilla is all imported. You can't grow vanilla in the UK, I don't believe. Um, so rather than searching for something that we have to get from abroad, use a herb like Woodruff that we can grow in the UK. And you can grow this, I think, in like shady, shaded borders. There you go, fact mm. of the day. Down there, darling. Chunky kindling. <laughs> what is it? Chunky kindling. I'm gonna get a bag of this. The, the issue, the thing is, as you guys know, with the perfect lighting of a stove or fire, you want a Jenga stag. This is proper chunky kindling, which is often quite hard to buy. Right. So yeah, it's nice to see a 
latency, it's a lot easier to use it when it's working. Nice. I'm going to start trying to, I'm going to experiment. I'm going to buy this tool online and experiment with making our own kindling at home. Oh. But for now, that's perfect. We might think that carrots are traditionally orange, but actually they were originally loads of different colours, mostly purple and yellow. It was in fact the Dutch that made them orange to show off their national colour. Learn something new every day. So Charlie and I have been talking so much about how we want to support local companies and British farmers and it seems that most of the things here are super local so you literally see the name of the farm on the raspberries this is the Cotswold Gold Oil we've got um, Charlie and Ivy's Crafted in Britain this one also mentions the farm Brinkworth Dairy from Wiltshire so it's super all local. super local which we love to see potatoes. Never seen these before. These are violet potatoes and they're purple. Um, but even better than that, they have a guide here which talks you through what potatoes are suitable for what cooking method. So you've got a ranking system which we'll show in a second uh, as to whether they're good for roasting, boiling, baking, etc. So we're looking for some roast potatoes for Sunday. Alouette, which is, I've never heard of them before, they're, they're perfect for roasting. So we're going to them. So as you might have guessed, our Beaufort and Blake outfits are no coincidence. There is, in fact, a Beaufort and Blake pop-up here at Jolly Nice. Could not be a lovelier setting in this little wooden, reclaimed wood store. Let's go and check it out. A gardener's retreat. Oh my gosh, how fabulous. Alrighty, so we are in the Gardener's Retreat, which is the Beaufort and Blake pop-up at Jolly Nice. It's actually open Wednesday to Sunday until Christmas Eve, so you've got plenty of time to come and check it out. Charlie and I are obsessed with the styling in here. There's terracotta plant pots, there's antiques, there's even a wax jacket like my super yeah, old barber in and here. And riding boots there. Riding the, boots. Yeah, I mean, I know that Sam, the founder, loves his antiques. Like me, we've got that in common, but I just love the setup of it. I mean, literally, this is almost like a man, not manscape because it's men's and women's, but do you know what I mean? The, the styling of here is my dream sort of shed. Yeah. Like the uh, all the stuff on the walls and everything. Mm. And of course, it's full of all of both on Blake's latest collection. Mm -hmm. Actually, some great stocking fillers. Is it too early to be talking about Christmas? I'm not sure. Have they shot sprouts on them? Yeah, look. So these are sprouts boxes. I've I've actually got a couple of pairs of these which I prefer to wear just for for nighttime instead of pajamas. Mm -hmm. Because um, they're super comfy. Yeah, gorgeous. Obviously, you've got all of the lovely shearling and layering pieces. Love it. I love the hangers as well with the antique brass. Yeah, it's just so nicely finished off, isn't it? Oh, you've got the antique brass in there as well. I mean, it's a shame that this isn't going to be here permanently, to be honest. Maybe it will. And the sink. Have you seen the sink? That's really cool. Okay, so I'm going to show you a few of my favourite pieces here in the boutique. I just grabbed this shirt. I feel like styling this has inspired me to do a few more shirt and gilet kind of looks, or I should say inspired by Charlie. So this is a really beautiful soft um, material and if you look closely it's got a gorgeous herringbone to it. I think the neutrals will go together absolutely beautifully. 
and both and blake always have the most gorgeous knitwear i love anything traditional kind of fair eyely or cable knitty this one is absolutely gorgeous and again would look great underneath the gilet what have you spotted darling that you like the look of from a men's perspective we've obviously got the fantastic gilet here which i am wearing um a really versatile piece and perfect for layering at this time of year um it's just easy to take and take on and off depending on what the weather's doing and similarly to what the point Josie made about knitwear, Beaufort and Blake do amazing knitwear for men. And this is a, a piece that's really stood out to me, just I love the colour. It's got little hints of blue in there and it's obviously a nice green colour. And I'm obsessed with green. Um, and then other than that, their shirts are a real statement piece and very versatile. You can obviously layer them up whether you wear them just as a classic shirt. Uh, you could wear a t-shirt under this and wear it as more of an overshirt. Um, but a really nice sort of smart casual piece to have in your wardrobe for this time of year. So just next to the lookbook that I've just been lusting over, they've actually got a 1965 copy of House and Garden magazine and it's so fascinating because we just found this section, which I'm never going to find again, hang on, there we go, which is a guide to antique dealers in W1 and this area here is now Bond Street area just full of the luxury stores, the Cartiers of the world, the Dior's, the Gucci's but interestingly it used to be full of antique shops so you can see all the different names of the antique dealers this one specialized in lamps shades curtains this one in fine quality 18th century furniture so that's what this area of central london used to be full of which is fascinating um, an antique supermarket on barrett street the world's largest permanent antique center if only that was still there, that would definitely be somewhere on my radar. how easy it is to milk the cow. <laughs> it does stay one. straight from the cow. <laughs> Are you a cross between a cow and a it's sheep? It's a cow and a sheep, yeah, it's a hybrid. Look at that. Look at that. Oh. You know when they say, oh god, it's, it's an awful lot of effort milking a cow. I don't know what the fuss is about. <laughs> Ah. Job done. <laughs> this yurt has got lots of lovely, very seasonal things inside. You've got a gingerbread pumpkin decorating kit. Oh my gosh, look at this giant velvet pumpkin. Wow, so many little treats for the Halloween season. Chocolate hazelnut pumpkins, oh my goodness. This is rather fabulous. I have never seen a British uh, pasta company before. Yorkshire Pasta Company. Definitely gonna have to try some of those. Charlie's found the jolly nice handmade ice cream. I just know this is gonna be amazing. What flavor is it? Strawberry. Wow, that does look amazing. Look, there's one espresso flavor. Cereal milk ice cream, oh my gosh. I think we need to try that. They did say they had polystyrene box oh we've got to get and then some we could put ice in it and then put them on ice 
Salt and caramel. And peanut no, but what butter. About and, I mean, yes. I think we each get to choose a flavor. I think we each get to choose two flavors. Two flavors, okay. And they've also got a jolly nice carrot and pistachio cake. Yeah, I'm gonna have we'll, to get this. We'll They say that the best hay fever cure is local honey. They've got plenty of that here. Gloucestershire honey. Oh my goodness, honey with white truffle. And look at this, such a gorgeous selection of freshly baked bread. I feel like I get so much more excited about this kind of stuff than design shopping these days. Do we need bread for tomorrow's breakfast, darling? We're not, we're not needing any bread for tomorrow, no. Um, but bread looks good. Looks delish. Look at the size of that um, croissant. Oh my gosh. The size of like the... Oh, Stunning. Well, I think we have ticked off every possible experience here at the Jolly Nice farm shop. What a gorgeous place. I really wish we lived a little bit closer, but it's definitely worth a trip out here. So many fabulous things going on. We just had a delicious, I had a cauliflower, spiced cauliflower and cheese toasty in their restaurant. There is even a burger and milkshake drive through here, which apparently is absolutely amazing. Absolutely love how they are supporting local growers, local farmers, so many local businesses here. And just as I mentioned earlier, products and food items and treats that you just can't get in regular shops and regular supermarkets. Such gorgeous variety and lovely seasonal organic produce. It's just mouth-watering. So um, we've grabbed some coffee, Charlie and Kat, I can see them coming with lots of <laughs> ice creams for us to enjoy later. Later. And next on our road trip for today, we're going to head to Stowe, which is on our way home. Lots of lovely antique shops, lots of wonderful little delis, and another great place to visit if you are coming to the Cotswolds for a nice autumnal weekend. Hello again, my darlings. So as you can see, we are at home and not exploring Stowe. We realized we hadn't left ourselves enough time to really get our teeth stuck into the antique shops there. So I think we'll head there tomorrow instead. So we've zipped back home and I very quickly got changed into a lovely dress because as much as I love jeans, when we're going out for a pub dinner, I want to eat a lot <laughs> and therefore a dress is always the best option. A material that I'm really loving this year, well, this season is cord and this is a beautiful blue cord dress you guessed it from Beaufort and Blake I have cinched it in with the belt that I spoke to you about last week this was one that appeared on my Instagram story ads and very well targeted because I absolutely love it so I've cinched the dress in with that while we were in the pop-up, I had a little flick through the Both and Blake lookbook and they have got a pair, I'll pop a photo on the screen here, of green cord three-quarter length trousers and I feel like they would be the perfect addition to my wardrobe. So firmly on the wish list. Um, but yeah, this is what I'm going to wear this evening to head over to the bull. It is the tomato feast <laughs> tonight. I don't know if it's going to be interactive or if it's literally going to be like a regular meal where everything you get served is just <laughs> tomato themed. Yeah, so Charlie is finishing getting ready and then we're gonna hit the road to Charlbury. I'm glad that I wore my little um, sleeveless coat because I think we are going to be out here in the garden for tonight's tomato event. This is a lovely newly covered tent area. There's a bar in there, a lovely long table set up for us tonight. And over here is a fire pit area where we're going to watch some cooking demonstrations. They have got tomatoes freshly picked from the farm. I think we're going to learn a lot about different dishes with the seasonal produce and it's such a gorgeous, very cosy area for an autumnal dining 
dining evening. So this is where we're going to have a few cooking demonstrations later. They've got some fresh tomatoes, some meatballs and some broth brewing away on the fire. And this is such a great space. There's a bar in there, long table ready for us to have dinner. There's even a fire pit and some lovely cozy blankets to snuggle up under. Such a gorgeous space. Our menu for this evening, my goodness, sounds absolutely delicious. Really, really easy to drink. But again, yeah. not, not super, super hard, but very, very, very nice pairing with the tomato. Gorgeous. Um, as a Londoner um, and somebody who's only worked in London kitchens, um, I haven't really ever experienced produce like this. And obviously, you guys have gone to see the farm today. And you know, I initially thought I was just going to be down here for three months. Um, but it turns out I'm going to be here for a lot longer. Um, <laughs> that really is a, a, a huge part of that is to do with the farm, um, the work, amazing work that Thomas and Richard are doing, um, but just the ethos of this whole place. Um, you know, when I used to work at River Cafe, I used to work at Dorian in, in Notting Hill, and like, even though you're getting this amazing produce in, it, it turns up in plastic packaging, it turns up in crates. It's still amazing, and it's, uh, most of it is, is so brilliantly farmed, but you don't have that same tangible feel that you get with it. And, and, the chefs, you can just see that they get excited when Richard turns up with his cute dog. Oh. Um, you hear the, the rattling of um, Red uh, Defender, you know, showing up, and everyone gets excited. And he turns up with the most incredible stuff. And Thomas is honest. I like it's ridiculous how well you have done with that space. Like it was just weeds oh, and wow. wasteland. Just like I, was, I mean, I, I, I rocked up there and I was like, this just isn't a farm. To me, this is a complete. And within, like, he was like, no, no, I reckon I'll have some produce for you in like a couple of weeks. And I was like, no way. And just every week, just more and more and more things show up. Um, and I think really like the tomato is actually a perfect sort of symbol for the difference between what you can, as a as a chef or even just any anybody, the kind of stuff you get. And I don't want to. There is a particular brand of tomato that I won't say the name of, but it's, it's, but it's very much everywhere, and they're they're, kind of, they're doing really well because they just have different coloured tomatoes. You see them in all the L London food markets, everyone gets really excited, and we actually used to order them here before I came, and I remember trying them and just being like, it's just like solid water, basically, um, with a bit of crunch. And, um, but, but the flavour of these tomatoes is just like as good as you get in Italy. Like, it really is as good. And, what we're trying to do here is rely so much, so heavily on that, um, and hopefully we, kind of, when we're faced with the idea of having to call it that menu, just order tomato. I was like, it's like basically heartburn central. <laughs> I, hope, I hope there's enough variety in there for you guys to enjoy it, um, and yeah, feedback go up, and uh, hopefully see you guys back here. Great, thank you, George. got some monk jack meatballs and some seasonal veg of course all locally grown at the Bruin farm which is 15 minutes away from here for our main course it looks absolutely delicious what you guys got to see today hopefully by next year is going to be this bigger bigger thing but um so today's really special, basically what I'm trying to say, for, for, for all of us who work, you know, and I just want to say thank you for being here. Good morning, my darlings. It is now Friday morning. Last night was so much fun over at the Bull. We had such great chats on our table. We were sat with Phil, who is the owner of the Bull and the Pelican, um, and hopefully a few new pubs coming to the area very soon as well as some of the growing teams. So the Bull have partnered with a farm nearby, it's less than 15 minutes away, where they produce 
everything <laughs> well so much seasonal produce for the restaurant um and yeah we had some really interesting conversations similar to what charlie and i have been talking about here on the channel lately the benefits both from a taste and a health and an environmental perspective of buying more local seasonal produce so it just felt very full circle and we had some really really interesting conversations also about the limitations of that and what we can do as a collective and what they can do as businesses to help overcome those limitations so it's really really interesting food was sensationally delicious the chefs there fed by george on instagram head chef oh my goodness just absolutely delicious i never knew i could get that excited <laughs> about tomatoes it was just absolutely scrumptious really really lovely evening we oh my gosh it was very very smoky <laughs> we were sat next to the fire pit and my hair this morning i've actually had to put on some some hair perfume fragrance hair mist from joe loves it's their tuberose one i think that's just about solved it but my coat that i was wearing last night i'm definitely gonna have to put in my fashion fridge to steam clean that so today when i have finished my coffee which is very much needed we are actually going to stumble over to the pumpkin field which when this video goes live will actually be the first day that it'll be officially open so perfect timing if you are planning a little seasonal weekend in the Cotswolds. It's at Glebe Farm, which is a really lovely local farm to us. And there are pumpkin fields and there are pumpkin fields. And this one is incredible because it's very wild, very natural. And the views, the location is just absolutely stunning. She's got a huge variety of pumpkins. I would recommend taking a truck or a bucket or a really big reusable bag um, or something to take them home in. And wellies, <laughs> wellies would be highly recommended. So that's on the agenda this morning and then we're gonna carry on with our little kind of road trip and we'll show you a few more of our favorite places in the Cotswolds. So outfit of the day for now. Not sure if that is a good height. I have got on some Adenola leggings for <laughs> ease of movement um, and then some lovely boots, although I may swap into wellies to go into the pumpkin field. These might be a little bit too smart. I've popped on a cashmere roll neck and then the vest top is from Beaufort and Blake. It is such a lovely layering piece to just add that extra layer of coziness and warmth when you need it for a day out and about exploring. And then I am going to pop on, probably not for the pumpkin patch, but if I don't end up getting changed before we head out. So I think we might, we might head out for brunch. This is my gorgeous... Ralph Lauren cape and this would be its first ever official outing so I think it looks really nice with the leggings and with boots and then we've got the gorgeous layering pieces underneath so this is the outfit of the day and without further ado let's head over to the Glebe Farm pumpkin patch. Please excuse all the clothes on the sofa behind me and know that sofa is not staying there. Long story basically Charlie trying to prove a point but inadvertently proved my point <laughs> that it would not work in here. Anyway, by the way, if anyone wants to buy it, we're trying to sell it. So let me know if anyone's in the market for a very tall knoll sofa. I thought this was actually a better way of showing you the outfit of the day. Really love it. Just actually just super cozy, super warm and the addition of the cape makes it very elegant as well. Love the addition of the gorgeous vest it just makes it so nice and cozy warm and the cape adds the perfect elegant finishing touch
incredibly breezy so not sure if you'll be able to hear me but here is my little haul from the Glebe Farm pumpkin patch. These um, bits of greenery will actually shrivel down and wither away probably in the next week or so so it might not be quite such a pumpkin jungle by the time the field officially opens but she's got such a gorgeous variety these little white sugar pumpkins some really knobbly gnarly ones some very unusual I think these are called I don't know but they've got a really funny name <laughs> I will pop it on the screen here this um very knobbly one in the middle there's a few little sunflowers still growing in the field and look at these incredible views if I sound out of breath it's because it is certainly not easy <laughs> trudging a giant heavy wheelbarrow through the fields but worth it for this gorgeous scenery absolutely beautiful okay my darlings we're here in the office because i have just been doing a little bit of email admin just finishing off a few bits and bobs for the day and something that charlie sorry that's me putting my phone <laughs> on the cabinet something that charlie and i love to do now on friday afternoons is i don't want to say take the time off but have a little bit more of a leisurely afternoon obviously keeping on top of emails and everything like that but doing a little bit more exploring so that is what we're going to head out and do now. I have done one more outfit change because of course we do have Kat with us here today. So I've been doing a few little snaps around the house this morning. Hopefully you'll be seeing some new content on the home Instagram very soon. A few little autumnal touches. And I've popped on now a really cozy knit because despite the blue skies, it's not super warm today. I love the colours of this one. It's almost like... A tomato colour <laughs> spits very well with last night. Kind of ambery, reddy orange. Of course, it is both and Blake. Super cozy. And then same leggings I was wearing earlier. Perfect outfit for a little bit of exploring. So, without further ado, let's hit the road and do a few more of my favourite Cotswold hotspots. <laughs> shop this has inadvertently turned into a bit of a tour of our favorite farm shops in the Cotswolds but you can pick up some really nice local produce here ranging from pre-made delicious mouth-watering pies they've got veggies they've got your dairy needs eggs milk all locally sourced and they also do the most amazing burgers breakfast baps pizzas cakes coffees you name it I would definitely recommend um, checking them out on Instagram because then you can see what they're offering at what time of day we didn't realize that they were gonna be doing pizzas right now but they are so very hungry let's go inside and I'll show you around Here that you can take away with you as well. They've got some lasagnas, they are very famous for their sausage rolls here. And again, some nice local cheeses. There's some Morton cheese there from Kingstone Dairy. This one has got dried flowers on it, absolutely beautiful. Some local honey again, little quail eggs. Oh, so yummy. I just ordered a mammoth <laughs> amount of food. I am very, very excited for all of this. Pizzas, burgers, they even have a side of mac and cheese. Oh my god i'm so excited and um yeah it's turned out to be a really nice day so we are perched outside they've got lots of picnic tables with these little fluffy fluffy blankets fluffy um seat covers and um yeah we're gonna have a gorgeous little lunch and then carry on exploring what have you got there darling it's the truffle Ooh. burrata pizza isn't it that Ooh. looks amazing 
Look at these two dingbats. <laughs> what do we have for lunch, darling? We have a pizza. Pizza? We have pizza with yeah. pepperoni. Pepperoni? Pepperata. Yes. Very nice. It smells so good. Let's dig in. On Arillo, we have got the Parmesan truffle chips, the pizzas. And can I just say, guess what? The truffle chips didn't cost sixteen pounds like our age. Oh, burn! Times, and they're ten times better. <laughs> they're very good. Kat is about to have her first burger since turning from veggie to all-round eater. Are you excited? Very excited. Very, very excited. I'm excited <laughs> to share this moment with you, and I need to rate. I'm the Cotswold guy mac and cheese. Can you just uh, right. let's get a Charlie you know Irons. I like the chives, but do you know what I like is the charredness. Charredness. How is it? Um, that's up there. That's up there. That's very good. And they've used. Mm. I like they've used the, the bigger macaroni. Hmm. That's that's mm. controversial for me. Mm. Catherine. Mm. Good. good isn't it? Mm -hmm. Right. That's good. Give it over here, mate. Very welcome. We've got a lot of food here. I want a bit of everything. I'm going in. But I do want to try a bit of burger. Maybe a little bit. All right, Katarina. Okay, maybe I'll do a little bit. I'm going to do a dunk. Whoa, Chaz. All right. What's the verdict? Mm, I like that. Yes. Mm, that's that's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pleased to hear it. Mm, that is good. We're having a sharing board. Is that enough for you, that there? We mm. half this. Couldn't resist a chai latte for the road. So we've just been shown down to this gorgeous new cabin here at the Chippy Flower Farm and they're actually going to start doing workshops here where you can do wreath making or um, dried flower arranging. This room has got the best view in the whole of the Cotswolds, just beautiful rolling hills and they've collected some beautiful blooms where in the summer it's a cut flower area, you can come and pick your own dahlias and um, huge variety of blooms but now they've got some beautiful dried bits from hydrangeas to dried alliums, dried poppy seed heads and this space is just the most beautiful studio for different workshops so what I'll do is I will leave a link Link down below to the Chippy Flower Farm's new website and they're going to leave all of their upcoming workshops and events on their website so another lovely one to check out and if you do happen to drive by then it's just the most beautiful place to come and explore. Well, we couldn't come to this area without coming to our absolute favourite thatched cottage, or third favourite thatched cottage after Straw Top and Straw Top 2. It is, of course, Quince and Clover. We're going to go and uh, maybe get an ice cream, maybe get a milkshake, but it is an absolute must visit if you come to this area for a weekend. So, without further ado, the final stop on our little mini Cotswold tour, Quince and Clover.
selection of cakes and you can get a box of salads to take home. That's a few of our favorite things to do. Today, however, we are gonna treat ourselves to a quince and clover ice cream. I'm very tempted to get a gummy bear ice cream milkshake. Mm. Hello again, my darlings. We are back home now. It is half past four. We've just dropped Kat off at the station. She's heading back to London. I really hope you enjoyed the little interspersion insertion <laughs> of the jazzy clips um, that we filmed with Kat. Obviously we wanted to bring Kat along with us because we want to get more photographic, um, <laughs> more photographs of these places because we want to start to put together more kind of guides on the blog and also to share with our guests at Straw Top Cottages. So um, yeah, it's great having Kat with us to shoot some extra beautiful content. Last stop was Quince and Clover. I feel so full <laughs> from that gummy bear flavored milkshake. It was absolutely scrumptious. Um, we're back with the boys now and very shortly, we're just gonna zip through a few urgent emails that have come in this afternoon and then we're gonna head out for a walk. Very much feel like I need to stretch my legs after um, everything that we've consumed today. But while Charlie finishes off a little bit of admin upstairs, I'm going to do a bit of watering of the greenhouse because it has been so lovely today. And um, quite a lot of things in the greenhouse have just kind of reached the end of their productive summer season. So they need to either get thrown out, sadly put in the compost or just majorly pruned back. So I think that is a task that I need to tackle a little and often. And seeing as we've got some quite nice weather over the next week, I think I will just do a little bit each day because it's a very boring task. The end of summer tidy up in your garden and in your greenhouse is the least rewarding job of all the gardening jobs. It's basically like tidying up. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna do 10 minutes today and I'll just do a little bit each day for the next few days. This jumper, by the way, I did a little Instagram story and so many of you were asking about the jumper. It is absolutely gorgeous, so snuggly, um, and I think I'll be living in it between now and Christmas. <laughs> it feels quite festive, but I love it. Are you my bun bun? Are you a bunny rabbit or a sausage? Were you barking at hedgehogs last night? Don't tell everybody that you were barking at hedgehogs last night. Look at my whiskers. Look at my whiskers, everybody. A glorious afternoon. Oh, lots of tractor noise. Okay, I've given everywhere a water. As you can see, the tomatoes, <laughs> Well, they're certainly not gonna ripen anymore. Thank you to all of you that have recommended fried green tomatoes. I definitely want to give that a try. Yes, everything looks a little bit sad and just, oh my gosh, can you believe another growing season has pretty, pr pretty much, pretty much come to an end. Gosh, tractor and helicopter noise orama. That is literally summing up the Cotswolds. <laughs> well, so, okay, I'm gonna get snipping and give this place one heck of a tidy.
shall we back from our walk and dinner is served i'll have a little bit of mustard as well please dying really? we have got our Mash or... side we have got our pies from jolly nice they look jolly good they look jolly good they look jolly nice and we are going to enjoy them in here tv dinner on a friday night in front of the fire and we are watching the david beckham documentary charlie yeah you did meet him Best 15 minutes ever? <clears throat> no, best 15 minutes was in the church with you, mate. Oh! But it's up there. Like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's closely second. No, <laughs> Lovely. No, no, but it is in the top 10 moments in my life thus far. But I'm going to become best friends with Beckham. So, David, yep. if you're watching, we only live 20 minutes. The away. funny thing is, so he is actually Sunday friends roast. with the guy that we were chatting to earlier, he Chris. Is, and we only live 20 minutes away, mate. So, if you have a fancy a Sunday roast, you always. Do you welcome. think David and Victoria are at home watching this vlog? I think. David Beckham would love a Sunday roast here. I think he would. I think he would. I, and actually, I think I'd get on well with Victoria. Yeah, I think I'd you would actually. to chat about. So David, if you're watching, please <laughs> ring me. <laughs> we'll leave Charlie's number down below. And on that note, I'm going to end the vlog, darlings. So thank you for watching. And good night. <laughs> you are a doorknob. Daddy, I'm not David well. I'm not David really well. well.